What's up people of the internet, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. Now, I just want to say before I start this video, I am not a good baker. Making this video took me about like 8 to 12 hours, and 8 hours of it was actually trying to make bread for the first time. So hence, I suck at baking. But not only was this the first time making actual bread for the first time, I wanted to challenge myself in some type of way, and I remember my banana bread video in the past, and I was like, you know what? I want to incorporate what I learned before in some type of way in this video and make this also a tripod only video as well. Now this probably wasn't my greatest idea in terms of video, learning how to bake bread for the first time and recording this video at the same time probably wasn't actually the greatest combo I could do, but to the bakers out there, I don't think I'm ever going to go back to store bought bread. So enough of me talking, let me show you today's video and right afterwards I'll give you a breakdown of how I shot this video as well as why I chose specific transitions for this video and I'll add in some fun stories of what happened during the process of making this video as well. Please enjoy. So I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making dope bread for my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. But before I get into this breakdown of how I shot this video, I just want to quickly share where I get my inspirations and ideas for my videos. So I want to give a quick shout out to my close friends as well as my coworkers because the conversations I have with them can get pretty freaking random and miraculously enough in those conversations, an idea for a video comes out. So get this, the idea for this video actually came from a coworker of mine because she mentioned that a friend of ours in college actually created his own peanut butter company. Now as you already could tell, conversations can get pretty random at this point. So another coworker kind of just mentioned and kind of entertained that story. It was like, yo Roy, you should hit that guy up and you know make a commercial for him or something. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like work, blah, blah, blah. But then I kind of marinated that idea and I was like, you know what, something as simple as peanut butter, I kind of want to make something like a peanut butter jelly sandwich and make a video out of it to challenge, kind of challenge myself and boost my creativity in some type of way. Now obviously you can tell this video wasn't a fake commercial or a video for that guy who made his peanut butter company, but I talked to my friend and he was like, yo Royce, I think it'd be a pretty funny joke if you created the bread for a peanut butter jelly sandwich or something. And I was like, you know what, that's actually pretty funny. I actually kind of like that. That's kind of random, it's kind of dumb, but I think that'll be pretty interesting and I can make something out of it or something like that. Enough of me bantering, let's start this breakdown. So right off the bat, the video starts showing the ingredients to make bread, and the next scene is being transitioned to by sliding the mixing bowl across the lens. Now, because I'm working with the tripod only, I need to do some actions on my end to incorporate some type of different flavor to the video right off the bat because it's not a big commercial. Now, in order to achieve this transition, I use mash just like how I did in the ending of my promo video for that barbershop to fill the frame in order to seamlessly transition from a still shot to another still shot of me pouring flour into a measuring cup. The next scene right after, you know, allowed me to seamlessly use a hard cut transition, which then follows with the scene of me pouring sugar into a tablespoon. As you can see, I use keyframes in order to gradually zoom in and pour me pouring the sugar. And because of the zoom action, I wanted to create this type of tension, suspenseful action, suspenseful moment in order for it to really drive us to the next scene to really see what the heck is going to happen next. Now, to transition to the next scene of me mixing the drives with the hands in the mixing bowl, I used another hard cut because I really wanted to tone down the effect of the mask I used in the beginning. And as soon as your eyes kind of get locked in of like of me using a lot of hard cuts, and as soon as you think they're, all the masking is, has been died down, I used another mask again and, and moved my body across the lens just how I used similarly in the effect of how I used in the beginning of the video, just in a different direction. From here, I continue to use hard cuts to completely die down the effect of using these masks because I want to effectively use another transition called a film burn overlay. And I use this also in my barbershop promo video 
to Sammy's transition from scene to scene. And in this case, I wanted to transition from the volcano structure being built to me putting a hole with my finger into the volcano structure itself. Now, as the hard cuts continue as I make a deeper hole in the volcano in order to, for me to have a place to put water in it, and I use another hard cut in order for me to transition to me kneading the crap out of the whole thing. Fortunately, but unfortunately, as you can tell, I had to use another film burn overlay because I thought the shots of me kneading the crap out of it and slamming the dough at the cutting board just wasn't appropriate for me to use another hard cut. So, fortunately and unfortunately, I used it one more time. But before you think that that overlay is being overused, I wanted to change the flavor really quickly before your brain actually continues to think about it more. And in order to do that, I used the flame overlay that I used in my burger video actually to transition from the bread being in the oven to being on the cutting board immediately and seamlessly. Getting to this point, it took me about nine, 10 hours, whatever it may be, because it was so hard to make bread. My first attempt failed miserably. And in order to get the second attempt, I had to really talk to a friend to really get to that point. And that same friend who mentioned that peanut butter story, you know, she's actually like a straight up guru in making bread. So I called her panicking, figuring out what to do. And lo and behold, she gave me enough, you know, encouragement to actually get there. She did laugh a lot, but I was able to muster enough grit to actually get another second attempt. And thank God, it, uh, you know, it turned out great. So going back to the video, I want to give credit to Daniel Schiffer for his fake commercial for his cream cheese video because there's this one scene where he picks up the knife in the background and that scene I kind of wanted to do the same thing for my video because it kind of gave this surprise, this anticipation feeling and I wanted to incorporate it and make it my own. So in order to do that, I did the same thing using masks and in order to put the slide the knife across the lens to display the bread being quote unquote cut into two pieces. So if you're following the pattern here in terms of how I use hard cuts, I dot down the effect and with another hard cut to display the peanut butter and jelly containers on the cutting board. Now you gotta admit, the jars moving on their own is a pretty sick shot. I'm pretty proud of it. But I'm not gonna go into super detail of how I got this shot. I use masks again. So if you want me to you know, give a breakdown of how I actually did this shot or how I use and apply masks, feel free to leave a comment below and hopefully I'll make a video uh, later on in the future. Now continuing on, we have here me opening the, both the peanut butter and jelly jars and then it transitions all of a sudden to me spreading the peanut butter on the, one of the slices. Now in order to achieve this, I obviously had to make some type of makeshift overview, overhead shot, but after that was all set up, once the jars were open and the caps were kind of, you know, taken off out of frame, I used keyframes to zoom into the jars in order to use mats again in order for it to quote unquote us to go into the next scene. And on following the peanut butter being spread, I used the crossfade transitions just like how I did in the ending of my barbershop promo video. I wanted to cut back on the transitions, so that crossfade was a little more appropriate because it allowed me to kind of get the feeling and give that feeling across that we're getting towards the end of the video. Now to end the video, I thought about using the focus reveal method by like leaning the tripod forwards, but because of the song and the ending of the song, I felt like the crescendoing was, wasn't really calling for the focus reveal method. So I thought that dropping the sandwich in the frame felt more appropriate and it was calling out to me more. So to the end of the video, I used another hard cut to give the feeling that it's the ending of the video. And in order to do that, I also used keyframes just like before to zoom in gradually in order to create this tension, this feeling of like we're getting towards the end to follow the crescendoing of the music. And then all of a sudden, boom, you see the logos at the end of the Skippy and the Smuckers as well as my logo to end the video. All right guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm not sure if I'm gonna make bread again, but I guess we'll see what happens. Now, if you have any challenges that you may think of, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, feel free to hit that subscribe button as well. Until the next one, God bless.